Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. Lee Cantor here, another episode of ATDC Radio, and this is going to be a fun one. We got some folks from Frazier and Dieter here. We're going to kick it off with Brian Holloway. Welcome. Thank you very much for having us. Um, Brian Holloway with Frazier and Dieter. We're a full service um, accounting and advisory firm based here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, we're, we've been around for about 40 years, uh, almost here in the next year or so. And, uh, we're, uh, as I mentioned, we're based here in Atlanta. We've got um, some other offices and other markets, including Tampa, um, Nashville, Charlotte. Uh, we extend all the way as far west as Las Vegas. Um, and we also opened our first international location earlier this year in London. Um, so we're, we're starting to spread out um, a good bit. Taking uh, over the world. Yes. <laughs> well, we're, we're trying to. So we're considered a, a top 50 um, accounting firm here domestically, uh, but are doing a lot of work internationally and just made sense to open up shop in uh, in London, like I said, a few minutes ago. So so now uh, uh, what's your relationship with ATDC? Why, sure. why is ATDC important to your firm? Uh, well, we as a firm, we... Uh, have a lot of different industry focus uh, practices. One of them, one of the primary ones is technology. Um, and so we serve a lot of technology clients, uh, both here in Atlanta and other markets that we're in across the U.S., um, anywhere from startup, pre-revenue companies, all the way up to um, large middle market and, and bigger um, privately held entities. So we service the um, – the, the companies that are in this industry. Um, and so we, we uh, feel the need to give back to the community. So we're oftentimes down here at ATDC, uh, whether it's giving presentations or, you know, being advisors, that type of thing. So something that's very important to us. Now your specialty is valuation. Uh, can you talk about what that is and why it's important for a company to understand what its valuation is? Sure. So on the business valuation side, we, we value companies, um, oftentimes for, uh, mergers and acquisitions. Um, as companies grow, they tend to either need additional investors or, uh, maybe at a point where they're looking to sell their company, business owners are. Um, so they'll, they'll bring, uh, professionals like us in to help them understand the value of their company. Uh, for, again, for potential sale, maybe to bring on diff uh, different rounds of investments, um, that type of thing. We, we also do valuations for other purposes as well. Some of it's tax related, um, some of it's litigation related, that type of thing. And some of it's just for, um, internal management planning purposes if business owner is, uh, not necessarily interested in selling or bringing on additional investments at a, this point in time, maybe three, four or five years down the road, they are. Uh, so it's always helpful for them to get an understanding now of the process and, and where they stand, you know, compared to their peers. So now is there a standard way to do evaluation like, a, or is that kind of a subjective thing? Uh, there are standard approaches that are used. Um, oftentimes you're looking at income related approaches or market related approaches, um, based on projected cash flow, uh, based on valuation multiples of, um, the industry that the company is in. Um, so there are standard approaches that are used, but within that there is some subjectivity if it's, um, uh, determining discount rates when looking at cash flow, um, there are some, some market related and, uh, company specific, uh, components to developing an appropriate discount rate. But, um, as with any valuation, whether it's a business valuation or an intangible asset valuation, or even real estate valuations, there, there are some subjectivity components to it as well. Now, is there any advice for a business owner that's thinking of selling or might be uh, looking to be acquired at some point, should, uh, the things that they can be doing to increase their valuation? 
I think so. I think they need to get an understanding as to where they're at compared to maybe other competitors and their their close proximity. Um, but even from a national standpoint as well, um, as I kind of alluded to earlier, one of the market or one of the approaches that we look at um, in performing our valuation analyses are market related approaches. So we are looking at uh, profit, uh, related multiples, revenue multiples. Um, and so those, those should be kind of factored in from, um, and, and be able to be understood by the business owner. Um, and so working with a valuation practitioner like myself or, or someone else, um, would just allow them to understand where they're at a, at a particular point in time. Uh, the things that go into those those multiples, what drives those, whether it's profitability, growth, um, that type of thing. So it's always helpful for business owners to um, kind of understand that, again, if they're not at that uh, point in time, but, but maybe there is something imminent, um, even more so uh, a reason to talk to advisors in this area. So now, uh, businesses that are working with the CPA, should this be something that's part of a, an annual checkup to kind of get an idea of what your valuation is, just as kind of a good practice of knowing I think that, that information? I think that is best practice. Oftentimes, we may get brought in, or from my experience, have been doing this for a number of years. We oftentimes get brought in whenever one is actually needed. Um, there is a, um, a pressing transaction that's out there um, or, you know, if it's a, a litigation project or a tax project as well, sometimes we'll get brought in whenever, you know, there's not much time left, but they, they know they have to have it done um, just by, you know, discussions with other advisors that they have. But we, we certainly recommend this. And, you know, uh, from our experience, those that are, um, getting this this kind of checkup whether it's an annual checkup or you know every at least every couple of years or so um, we've always seen the business owners having benefit of that and being able to make better decisions um, even whether it's day to day that type of thing as well going forward so now um, how'd you get into accounting how'd that come about been, when you were a little kid you were like one day I'm gonna be a CPA. <laughs> Sure. So I started out my uh, professional career in banking, um, lasted all of about a year and a half or two, uh, SunTrust Bank here in Atlanta, uh, just kind of valuation. The the industry was uh, presented to me, just kind of fell in my lap, if you will. And so started out looking at uh, tangible assets, so the real estate and uh, the hard assets that are out there, but always had a passion to um, – to to get into the business valuation area and the intellectual property and intangible assets. So uh, probably say since 2003 or so, I've been spending uh, most of my time in, in that area. Uh, started out with um, a company called American Appraisal Associates. They're one of the original independent valuation firms back in the day and um, had, you know, uh, been with a couple other firms, but uh, um, it's always, it's even a, a, a bit, much bigger field now than it was when I got in and uh, we even are starting to get involved with, you know, classes at the collegiate level um, and getting folks exposed to this area, even at an earlier stage in their career. Yeah. Any um, project you work on that stands out, anything more rewarding or interesting that uh, you come about during your career? Sure. Well, I'd say, out of a career, um, that'd be a, certainly a tough question. I, I think an interesting project um, that I've worked on recently um, has been working with a, um, a local company that's in the unmanned aircraft space, um, whose primary um, customer base is with the U.S. Department of Defense and other types of um, entities. And so working with the business owner directly um They've been up and running for uh, several years now, but um, they've just grown leaps and bounds um, over the last few years and have been able to achieve um, um, bring on different, different investors over the last few years and have steadily grown and uh, continue to grow. So it's just been interesting kind of looking at that. Uh, we're 
just there's a lot of information out there in the marketplace today about artificial intelligence and uh, that type of thing. I think that kind of delves over into um, the unmanned aircraft space too. So just you know, we're getting exposed to different. Uh, companies, different industries all the time with the type of work that we're doing. Uh, so it's always a learning process. And um, I think that's what's been very rewarding about this career so far is that every project's different, every business is different. Um, so it's been been very, you know, uh, interesting. Every project's different and interesting with its own degree. So now if somebody wanted to learn more about um, your and the resources you have at your disposal here at ATDC or other business people and they want to kind of get an evaluation for their company or just want to meet with you, is there a way to contact you? What's the best coordinates? Sure, sure. I'd say um, uh, send me an email. Is I'm always uh, very accessible that way, brian.holloway at fraserdeeter.com um, uh, or you know my, my direct number, Four zero four five seven three four three two two. All that information can be found on the the com- our company's website, FraserDeeter dot com. Um, and then, are you be, here at ATDC? Or are you? Speaking, we are. We you, are. Our, you our, personally, or I, I'm firm? here. Um, was just here speaking recently um, about evaluation related topic here in the community center a couple months ago. Um, so I'm here, you know, um, a few times throughout the year, and have other colleagues that are here. Um, pretty often as well. So we'll, we'll be here, you know, even two or three times this week as well for different events. Uh, well, so. thank you so much for supporting ATDC. Great. I we'll certainly appreciate it. And, All right. Hang with us. We got one more guest. Uh, next up on ATDC radio, we got Tommy Zavia. Did I say it right? I said it wrong. That's close enough, but we'll go with Tommy Zavier. Zavier. I should, yeah, I should know. My best friend's name is, Z- is Xavier and I call him Zavier. Okay. I should have known. So now you're here to talk about the R&D tax credit. Um, please explain that to us because that's an important thing uh, for the folks here at ATDC. Absolutely. So the R&D credit, for those who don't know, is a big benefit for startup companies and those who are uh, looking to save cash uh, because you can get a credit from a federal perspective and also on the state side. Um, so it can help you on the cash flow side. So um I don't think there are many companies here at ATDC who wouldn't qualify for it. So absolutely talk to somebody about it uh, if you're looking to save on your cash. So well, now, how, how, what is, what's some kind of um, examples of what this tax credit, like what is some activity you can be doing that you th- that you can take advantage of this tax credit? Yeah, so everybody's got a definition of what research and development is, and that definition is correct. There's nothing wrong with it. However, the Internal Revenue Code defines it a little bit differently. So just... For those who are listening to the show, I'd say just keep keep your mindset on what re- research and development is, that there's nothing wrong with it, but go with the test that I'm telling you. And as okay. long as you can answer the following question, then you're more likely to have an activity that qualifies and then talk, uh, reach out to a professional in the industry who can help you out. And that question is the following. Are you doing anything from a design methodology capability that you don't know how to do? So from an engineering perspective, if you don't go how, know how to go from point A to the point B, then you probably have R&D. But isn't most startups are solving a problem that nobody knows how to do? Exactly. <laughs> so especially for software companies or even manufacturing companies, they're not going to know how to go from A to B. Um, so yeah, this is definitely absolutely something that they uh, should take advantage of. I'll, so I'll give you some some statistics out there that are available to us. Um, the IRS publishes these, and the latest are available out of t- t- 2013 – it's a $13.2 billion industry. That $13.2 billion is only represented by 30 to 40% of companies out there. That means there's 60 to 70% of companies who are not taking advantage of this. They could, but they they're could not. Be, but they're not. Because four things happen, typically, I'd run into. One is education. Two is education. Three is education. <laughs> and you could probably guess the fourth one. So you don't know about it. Or if you know about it, you don't think it applies to you. Mm -hmm. Even if you think it applies to you, you think you're not spending enough money to warrant a study. And then there are those who are taking advantage of it and they think they're pretty well taken care of. So now, but if I'm, if I am providing a service for that is appropriate for this tax credit, like how am I putting a dollar amount on that? 
Yeah, your ROI on this thing is you're going to combine all your expenditures that you're spending on R and D. Let's say that's a million dollars from a federal and state perspective, def- depending on different states. But here in Georgia, it's a pretty good um, amount back. You're going to get somewhere between ten to twenty five percent back on your R and D expenditures. And that's it, any expenditure. That's not any expenditure. There's three categories: is wages. So how much you paying your employees? Mm-hmm. Supplies. If you're a software company, typically you're not going to have supplies. But right. if you are making a widget, you're going to have expenditures in that. And then you're going to have contractor costs. Your 10 to 99 cost or you're sending out your unit to be tested to at an at a outside agency to test that uh, for you and give you results back. So all of those expenditures qualify. So people and um, whatever the thing is that you're making. Exactly. And then uh, by working with you, you help kind of put the things in the right bucket so that we keep track of it properly and then make sure that we get the right tax credit? Yeah. So you ever play the game operations as a kid? Mm -hmm. Yeah. As a kid, you can play operations. I don't recommend doing this on your own because you can go to your general practitioner as a doctor and he will have a lot of knowledge about your body as a whole. Mm -hmm. But if you have an issue with your heart, you're going to go see a specialist. I highly recommend that you engage with a specialist in this area because it could look it's simple, but it isn't. There's a lot of technical difficulties with it. A lot of people fall into pitfalls. And so get yourself a really good professional that specializes in this area to help you out. So it isn't like if I'm doing uh, kind of the down and dirty version of taxes, it just says R&D and I just put a number in and I'm kind of guesstimating what my people and thing amount is you what you would be doing we call that audit roulette uh-huh. so you you can definitely put a number down and then you're you're, you're going to be guessing whether they, are you going to get audited by the irs or the department of revenue uh, for the state that you're uh, putting in the, the r&d credit for and if you get audited then it's they're going to ask for uh, receipts and they're going to paperwork they're going to ask for documentation that's right. where we come in me being an ex-engineer, recovering engineer, we understand the engineering geek of it, and mm-hmm. we do scientific engineering write-ups, and we back up your claim. So everything you say is now documented so that now you have a case to present, and then... Yeah, we, we usually what we call that is a deliverable and methodology, and, and you can just, the way we present that is, is you can just push that across the table and make 90 to 95% of all the IRS's questions go away. Mm-hmm. So you're being proactive rather than reactive. Absolutely. Now, um, are you here at ATDC kind of t- uh, teaching the folks about this? I'm trying to be. I'm, I'm new to the area, so I'm getting uh, to get to know more folks at ATDC. Um, this is bringing me back to my engineering days when I right. was at University of Southern California studying electrical engineering. So being back here brings me back to those days. So I'm looking to connect more with the folks here and, and just talk engineering geek with them. So now are there certain kind of niches within the startup community that this is more appropriate for? Or is this pretty much for anybody that's in here? I think it's for the vast majority of the of the companies that are here. So as long as you can answer that one question, if what is your engineering challenge from going from point A to point B, then this applies to you. Mm-hmm. And then like, is this something that you can tell at a glance if they talk to you about what they're doing that you can say, you know what, you might be able to qualify for this or is this something that they got to invest in you and dig in there and do some discovery and to really understand if this is even appropriate? That's a great question. No. So within a say 15 to 30 minute conversation with their kind of chief technology person, we can, I can assess pretty quickly whether they're going to have an R&D activity that qualifies. Mm-hmm. And then with within an hour, we'll know the range of uh, benefits they're going to get with some information that I'll get. Right. From so the this CFO. doesn't require this huge investment of time and money to see if this is even a thing for them. Like you can tell pretty quickly, like, oh, there, I think there might be something here. And if you get a little more data, you're able to kind of get a ballpark of what is a number that they can expect. Yeah, you want to come on my team? You got this know. thing down you, pretty down. Yeah, I'm asking <laughs> you. I, yeah, I don't know anything good. about yeah. this. That's it. It's easy. So, so it's that easy. Right? It's that it, easy it's, at the beginning. So right. the assessment part of it is that easy. Right, but when you dig in there, obviously that has its own challenges. But to get a ballpark to see if this is going to be something that's worthwhile pursuing, you can tell pretty quickly. Exactly. Yeah, and then they, right. they can then determine if this is an investment they want to make in digging in deeper to get the exact number that's going to protect them. That's right. And then for you, um, you said, how are you going about kind of meeting the folks here? I'm just, You're just showing here. up and showing shaking up. hands and saying hello. And 
um, passing out my card and seeing mm-hmm. who wants to talk about R and D. Because, like you said, I'm sure that percentage holds in this in this uh, uh, arena as well at ATDC. Most of the people aren't taking advantage of it, and they probably could be. So those who are here at ATDC who have people who are employing, they can get an immediate cash benefit with reducing their payroll taxes. Mm -hmm. So think um, how much you're paying your employees. Say you've got a a wage of um, half a million dollars to a million dollars and how much you're paying in payroll taxes. I can help you save all that payroll tax right away. Wow. So this is dramatic. It can really help them out and get them more more runway. It's a big cash flow for them. Now, what about like, um, I know this maybe isn't part of R&D tax credit, but there's other types of tax credits that might be appropriate, like an opportunity zone if they're in a certain area where they have their offices, that could be an area that they can benefit from as well. There are over 140 different schemes of between federal and state credits and incentives that are available to companies. So again, Engaging with the right CPA uh, who's knowledgeable in the area can help you maximize your benefits. Mm -hmm. And that do you find that a typical startup or a small company, they're not kind of maximizing what they could be? That's absolutely right. What happens is they either think that they can't afford it or they just don't have the right contacts with whom to talk to. So um, being here at ATDC, I, I, when, I was, when I was an engineer, I never had this kind of opportunity and, and being able to reach out to professionals such as CPA firms to help me even understand how to run a business. Mm-hmm. So just come out, meet us, or meet others who are here, have a conversation, talk to them about this stuff, and there are so many people here to help you out. Now, is this something that kind of makes Frazier and Dieter different than other CPA firms? There's some CPA firms that, you know, they just want to do your taxes and be done and not really kind of dig in deep and really understand your business, how to how you each can benefit from the relationship. Is that something that Frazier and Dieter kind of prides itself in is they want to go in there and understand all the ways they can help, not just I'm going to do your taxes at the end of the year? Yeah, that's why I joined Frazier and Dieter is, is because this is an area that we saw that we can definitely help out not only um, ATDC companies, but our clients as well. And so we've invested heavily in making sure that we have a full slew of services around credits and incentive. So it's not just federal credits and incentive, it's state and local tax, right. it's international. So that consulting side of it, um, we feel that we've differentiated ourselves from other firms uh, in that regards. And we have deep expertise and we don't have just CPAs. I mean, I've got engineers on my team to help right. me out too. Now, if somebody wanted to learn more, um, how can they get a hold of you? I would start with www.fraserdeeter.com. Go under tax and look for R&D. Mm-hmm. Next, you can email me, tommy.zavier, Z as in zebra, A, V as in Victor, I-E-H, at fraserdeeter.com. Or you can always Send me smoke signals. That's a, it's that simple. That's the gray. That's a gray box that sits on your on your desk. You know that telephone thingy. Um, 404-573-4514. And then you're here at ATDC also, right? I am. I come here about once a quarter. And then you come in to answer any questions about the R and D tax credit. Any or questions? Anything. Yeah, I, I. You can feed me ice cream or and whatever. You, you work for ice cream. Good I work to for know. ice cream. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story today. Thanks for having us. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We will see you all next time on ATDC Radio.